Silence is the foe that can never be defeated. Entrenched and hidden it lies, immeasurable down the narrowing years and all the endless hours left behind. Silence throws no shadows. Its ricochet is heard far in the hollows of the mind, where beauty and rage contest, a battle inaudible, even as Shakespeare's flower. The hell of meaning is every moment in which the fugitive spirit can find no refuge from echoes of all that's known, from the emptiness for his own defence in syllabic darkness. The future tense, the bleak diurnal blur of existence. What is the life of a poet worth when only a miracle can intervene, when all that has been is of little weight, the future but a particle of fate. What was it all about? The muted cry, the scream that would never reach for closure, and the anger destined only to die, a forced and unpropitiated flower that withered long before it reached its hour. It was enough to bring something of which to sing, but the words cannot help me now, alone in A and E, and in Kuwait, and barely sixty-three, here where I wait, knowing how already it is too late. It had always been too late. Poetry could never compensate for what had gone before or what was to follow after. It was an interval in a life left between knowledge and experience, a journey to the far-runged interstices of language and everlasting silence in the bleak diurnal glare of unlit stars below the surface of existence. How to survive, or even stay alive, long enough to see where the line left off, where beauty and truth were bought and betrayed, left to plead as late stars before they fade, briefly flare incised, in blue depths inlaid. Poetry, that never-ending yearning for the end, whether for the last line or another year, then life itself, the end is all that's known, unknown. Sometimes born on a primary, involuntary shout, the end from choice and chance is brought about. There, before and after, become as one, unifying everything lost and won. An echo that is heard in the sheer script of dreams, only to vanish with the dawn, leaving something indecipherable, the inconsolable future behind. Alone on a far out reach of language waits the poet, soothsayer of the age. What has a poet to look back to when all that he knows has been taken from him? When the future is little more than a plundered, unremembered mausoleum to his dreams. The poems like children have grown and gone, and nothing is what it seems. Memory is a forgotten notion of murmuring, ebbing underground streams. Always 
the days, the unfamiliar hours, tomorrows of after and before. To belong, even for a moment then, to a distant, irretrievable song, seen now as a prodigal son, unknown and unrecognisable as his own. It is the cause that beats the poet down, and all that's lost and won, the starless dreams towards the end, where after and before no longer seem to matter any more. Beyond the why of what it was about is a flame that can never be put out. Something burning low below the surface and the slow prostration of day and night. The hours a poet lingers in between, accompanied always by the unseen, constrained in the struggle for the unheard, intangible, unattainable word. The river of years he is lost among, ferrying him alone to a last song. It was there long before its beginning, an unwritten language without warning, inherent in the first drawn breath of life, and left there after everything had gone. What can it be but imagination, which stifles even its own utterance, and sets free, yet only to imprison and exile to anonymous silence? The immortal spirit grows, tortured in an earthly cell, unheard above the din, the levelled mute hilt of forgotten spring, an April sky stormy without ending. What drives the poet, trapped for a lifetime, locked behind rhythm and recurring rhyme? Eking out a living, the poet waits, his back to the world, forever alone. He flies over earth's precipitous depths and defies and contemplates all that's known or follows echoes mute and mnemonic which spiral to and from his horizon. Impenetrable darkness is his load, lapping against the shifting cornerstone the early foundations of day and night, a road where only shadows are his own, a journeyman pitching for the last light where charred, disparate stars together shone, alive for the memory of his name, not for the quest for sudden, bitter fame. So many the horizons, where words are as far away as the first evening star in the brightest day, embedded, remote, and inextinguishable in the grey-flung fields of interplanetary space, destined to blur and efface before they can pierce the surface of existence. Worse than silence, that inconsolable longing for the journey to be over, forced by a fierce wind towards landfall. What is left behind is beyond recall. What is known is indecipherable. Endless the words, 
endless, the weight for words to coalesce, always the emptiness without regress. Poetry is born of an urgent wait, a state of longing for the inchoate emptiness to be over, the undone, for silence to break from its fast cordon, free at last, yet doomed as a solo flight, faltering before it has reached its height. Why do we write when there is no one left to loiter, just long enough to listen and see with the vision of long ago? Or hear deep in the din of this harsh world the echo and tolling of its sorrow to know there is nothing that could be done. What can any of us do but wait, knowing how already it is too late? If I should not return, what would it all have been about? The rain in Hampstead Green, which never stopped falling through those last years. Or the early wind in the poplar leaves, reluctantly and yet how suddenly recalled. I seem to be left now, only with the hours always as I lay dying, within its vicinity, without my knowing, without even the time to say goodbye, but with enough time to die in, in silence, in pain, the colossal din of the unlived years slowly crashing in. Nothing mattered there, the words were in vain. There, nothing after would matter again. I'm still unable to apprehend how anything beyond the crucial moment, when there, without end, time was torn apart, when poetry alone was not enough, unknown its ineffable existence without name or number, undiagnosed anonymity that could not save me, searching before for myself, from among so many, for people after, once known, passing through familiarity, thrown as a shadow now, no longer my own, hollow as the sun's unshorn illusion, where rhythm was left, in the default mode, rhyme and utmost flotsam from another time. 